This is the Learn Jazz Standards Podcast, episode 116. Welcome to the LJS Podcast, where you get weekly jazz tips, interviews, stories, and advice for becoming a better jazz musician. And now your host, he's a jazz musician, author, and entrepreneur, Brent Bartstra. What is up, everybody? My name is Brent, and I am the jazz musician behind the website LearnJazzStandards.com, which is a blog, a podcast, and videos all geared towards helping you become a better jazz musician. If you are into jazz and you want to learn how to become a better player, whether you're a beginner just getting started out, intermediate trying to improve, or even if you're an advanced player trying to get some further insight My friend, you are in the right place. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. And on today's episode 116, I've got a killer special guest on the show. It's drummer, composer, teacher, Kobe Watkins. Kobe Watkins is really a powerhouse musician. Really honored to have him on the show. He's played with musicians like Sonny Rollins, Branford Marsalis, Joe Lovano, Curtis Fuller, Jim Hall, John Patitucci, Arturo Sandoval, Roy Haynes, uh, Roy Hargrove, Christian McBride, Bobby Broom. I mean, I could. I mean, you get the point, right? I mean, he's played with everybody, uh, and I had a great time talking to him, uh, just learning his story and and just getting his advice, which he's about to share with you. And I'm so stoked about that. And you know, Kobe. He has a brand new album coming out with his uh, group TED. It's called the Kobe Watkins Group TED. I want you to go check that out at www.kobewatkinsgrouptet.com. This album is called Movement. And uh, wow, just a powerhouse bunch of musicians. And he's going to talk a little bit about his album at the end. Uh, But listen... He also has a very special giveaway that he wants to give away to you guys, my audience. He's going to let me give away something really special to a select number of people. So you're going to have to listen to the very, very end of this show, and I'll tell you all about that. So be sure to listen to the very end. All right, I don't want to take up any more time. Let's get on the interview. Let's start learning from this jazz master, Kobe Watkins. Let's do this thing. All right, welcoming on the show today is Kobe Watkins. He's a drummer, he's a composer, he's an educator. Kobe, thanks for being here today. Thank you. Can't wait to start. Yeah, I'm so excited to have you on. And actually, I have uh, an interesting story about how when I first heard you uh, play, Kobe, uh, uh-huh. you're playing with uh, Bobby Broom uh, uh-huh. with his trio. Um, I, I can't remember at the, right now what the bassist was, but it was at the Jazz Alley. And uh, I was in college. I was going to college there. I went there uh, to college in Seattle for a year. Sure. And I happened to be at your show. I was checking it out. Uh, and then Bobby had some kind of problem with his guitar. Oh, it broke my down. Gosh. Yeah. And uh, and uh, so eventually they couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. So they announced, "Hey, does anybody have a guitar in the crowd?" And I was like, "Yeah, I have a guitar." And so was uh, that you? Yeah, that was me. Oh my gosh! <laughs> you remember this show? That's crazy. Yes. Absolutely. I'm telling Bobby about this tomorrow. Really? That's so yeah. cool. So, yeah, so I, I I ended up, I was sprinting to the dorms. The dorms are in downtown uh, near Jazz Alley, the club. I think in the meantime, someone might have had a Strat or something and yeah. handed it to him. And Bobby was totally owning it. I mean, he didn't, you know, but obviously it wasn't the ideal situation of having a, a hollow body. So I rushed back grab my guitar and 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 you guys finished Bobby played the rest of the the night with the guitar and uh anyways you guys sounded good but that was the first time I heard you play I just thought I'd add that antidote there um she wins this you were the guy <laughs> man okay that's awesome yeah well, we I'm got just... to you out for dinner man we owe you actually <laughs> no you totally don't that, that's so funny that I did not expect you to even remember that show because I, I, I know you play a lot and you're such an accomplished drummer you're such an accomplished uh musician so so stoked that you're here to uh you know to talk to my audience. And, you know, my audience is just excited to get to know you, to learn from you. I'm excited to learn from you. So uh, I just think we should start from square run right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. How did Kobe Watkins start getting into music? What's the start of that? Oh, man. Small child, three, four years old. It's so funny. Side note, I just saw my son just in the cabinets grabbing pots and pans out the tops. And my wife was like, we got to take those. I was like, I can't. This is what I did. And so 
I started as a kid, I was taking pots and pans out and playing on them. And I actually, my brother actually reminded me of something that I was did not know because you don't remember really much. But I would set the bowls up, plastic bowls up, the Tupperware, they used to sell this old school Tupperware. I would set it up in tones when okay. I was like three and four years old. So I was aware of like tonality even then. So, and I just wondered when I was in college, why am I so particular about tonality and my drums? And it was just, and even before college, even as a, a drum set player in church, I was wondering why I was so connected with tonality. Was it just a weird, was I just being weird? Anyhow. So as a kid through church, I was brought up in church. So I played drums through church and then I made a decision. I said, hey, well, maybe I should go to school and become a teacher. That was initially like, hey, my dad told me about Vanderbilt College of Music. And then I said, man, I'll, you know, I can teach. And as I was te- uh, going to school, I realized the love for playing was greater than and still as much uh, as teaching. So I was learning all these teaching skills and pedagogies, but then I was still going to the jam sessions and I was going and hanging out and doing that and still getting my work done. And so that was really interesting, like trying to make that duality happen. And then even going to the Latin jazz clubs later on in my junior, senior year when some of my friends started playing there. So that was like my third degree, well, my third branch of education. So there was the jam sessions, there was my uh, education degree happening, and then going to the to the um, Latin clubs and listening and and trying to follow and dance to the music. So there's a lot in there because as an educator, I wanted to be able to show my 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 children, my whoever my students were, that I could play all of these different instruments. So I made sure that I fell in love with each instrument that they had us um, practice for, a, I think a maximum of four weeks. We do a four week uh, time on just one or two different instruments. So it'd be like a woodwind, like a flute. And then you're doing on the brass side, you're doing like a French horn. Right. So you fall in love with these. I My approach was fall in love with these instruments so that you create the best sound from them. Yeah. So So, it it sounds like in a lot of ways, you know, you're equally in love with the education side of music as well as the performing side. But those two inform each other uh, in such a way that, you know, each one supports uh, the other. Is that true? You get it. Yep. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Totally get it. They're like spot on. I couldn't have said any better. Um, it, It was so... I think it was so important because I watched people around me and the, the, the guys and girls and ladies and gentlemen that were around me, they were really good at what they were doing or they were really already accomplished in some levels because they had levels of schooling. But I didn't as far as high school and things. I didn't come through that overly structured or even functional structure of high school band and marching band and things. So everything for me was like I was a sponge to everything and learning and understanding and figuring out. And most of the time, which even now, again, a a big, a big one for your audience is, and and for anybody is the process. Mm. Like dealing with yourself in the process is the most important time um, spending on your instrument because you figure out what you can do, what you cannot do, what you have, uh, what your abilities are, um, capable, the capabilities. Even so, you say, I can't really get that note right now, but I'm capable of getting that note eventually. Right. <laughs> How do I get that note eventually? Well, it just takes time and effort, slow, uh, methodical, and yeah. Everybody's not. Everybody doesn't want to do it slow and methodically. But sometimes it's really important if you trust that process first. Um, and then sometimes you you develop a different way that you may want to learn or process how you want to develop. But I think the slow because I always take it from my children. Now they did not walk from just walking. Right. They fell down. They got back up. They fell down again. They tried again and they fell some more. And it was a slow process. And it was over periods of months. Like, so I started trying to teach my boys how to to walk at six months, six, seven months. They were like 
on a little push thing. Well, okay, but we think about that with our instrument and jazz and music in general, and just give yourself some time, two months to get this, then the next two months to get this. And you know, you put yourself in, in a situation where you're giving yourself small goals, small successful goals, and that, man, you'll come, and that's what I did in school. Uh, that's what I do as a professional now. Um, and that's what I do with my students. Okay, we didn't get it. I'm okay with that. I tell my son, like, we're, we're, we're practicing. He's three years old and we're practicing his writing right now. Like, and I was like, man, you got to get these K's. You got to write the K's. And at first I was, went at it like, you got to write the entire letter. And then I said, nope, let's just draw a line. Dot to dot to dot. And I drew dots. And I was just like, oh, this makes perfect sense. You can only do things dot to dot. <laughs> one one at a time. You can't do right. everything in one fine swoop. And so we have to be really aware of ourselves because it makes us that much greater. Wow. I, I love that. And, you know, so we're, you're t- we're talking about a very goal oriented approach here, but not trying to bite off everything at once. And I, I know just from uh, knowing uh, some some people in my audience that they get overwhelmed about the journey of music and in jazz specifically. But overall, that journey in music, there's so much there and, and there's so much to go after. And there's always something that needs a little bit of work, but I, I love that uh, you're talking about with your son. You know, you draw the line first. You know, once you get that line, then you move to the next one. And yeah, uh, I, I, this is really so far. This is uh, I mean, this is really great stuff. Thanks for uh, sharing. Um, now, I want to backtrack one one second, just a little bit. Where did all this like? How did you get this musical drive? Because clearly, what you're describing right now is this uh, big musical motivation. Was there someone? Was it your family that turned you on to music like this? Like, where did it come? Was there someone? who injected themselves into your life or is this all just coming from uh just just from you from energy no uh (laughs) well my dad he was a um very fine drummer Mm. a very fine musician and as i later he just passed away last november um as i learned later learned from one of his his really good friends i mean and as a kid but you never I never titled him as a master musician. He was able to teach me rudimental rudiments, drum set rudiments, the ABCs of, of what we play on the drums. He was able to teach me that. Those were my only formal lessons as a drummer today. So, and we, it was, I could really count on probably one and a half of my hands, how many lessons we t- technically had. Mm-hmm. He taught me, me and my brother from talking words, what he said, how he said it, the intent of what music could and should be, how we should think, how we should um, approach, how we should execute. These things were, it was, and it was so direct that it was, it, it was, you know, you received it like, wow, like it's, and it's, it wasn't an opinion because as we see now, like, OK, so one one big we grew up in church. So my dad was just like, man, anybody in the audience, whether you're at church or at a concert playing the drums, anyone in the audience, you don't be surprised that anyone in the audience can basically outplay you. Hmm. But they're sitting right there in the audience. So don't be surprised if that, if that happens. So that was like, we were like, that was a big lesson. Like, man, somebody in the audience at any point could be better. So it humbles you how you approach what you're playing, especially in church. So weirdly enough, my brother and I, we made maybe 14, 15, 15, 16. He's a year younger than I am. We're sitting there and we see this disheveled guy walk in and he gets on the drums with this choir and he gets in. This is again, this is the like nineties. So this is not even clicks in the ear with a shield up in front of you. This is like organ, drums, guitar, bass, like raw and cut. And you're like black church, this guy gets up there, he plays, and we're like, oh, my gosh. He just – and just rips us a new one, just literally like <laughs> – and like we weren't – we weren't – we it, I don't know if we had played or what, but we had looked at the guy like, like, who is this cat? Like, why does he look like that? And look, he just tore us a new one. He was so skilled. Like, 
the delivery was amazing. And we were just like, oh, snap, there it is. This is what Daddy was talking about all this time. Like, he's that guy who's like, never again. And later on in my professional career, I met this guy and I remind him every time when I see him, I say, hey, man, you know, you walked into church and you killed us. <laughs> it, was like, it was like ridiculous. So, and he, and he inspired you. He inspired you to, to work harder. And, work uh, harder. and so we, we love the music from, because I know I got off slightly, but we love the music from how it was taught, how it was, a re, how it was uh, conveyed, how we listened was part of how the way he taught us how we listen. We didn't just listen to the drums. More times than not, we barely listened to the drums. We listened to the horns. We listened to the singer. We listened to the, the organ or the keyboard because right now that's how we drive the way we play drums. We drive from the, the harmony. We drive from the, the, where the vocalist is singing from, the, 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 her or he or her, him or her, um, the, the tension and release that the vocalist re- needs to, 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 to move forward in the song. So it's, it's driven, our, our music, that energy is, is driving from how it was taught, the things we listened to, which was gospel music, which was later on some uh, smooth jazz, some R&B. And then, you know, later on, we just started stretching out into everything. And even now, I'm infused by every form of music. Hmm. Absolutely. So, yeah, it, I think that's a powerful lesson right there is that, you know, talking about you're not just listening to the drums, you're listening to all the different uh, instruments in the band. And that just really uh, will inform how you play your instrument. Sometimes a lot of people make that mistake of just, uh, okay, I, I'm a saxophone player, so I'm just listening to saxophone players, but then missing out on everything that's happening. When you're playing, especially in a jazz scenario, you when you're playing with all these other musicians, we're all responding with each other and trying to grab things from each other, and that's the way that music is supposed to be played. Um, mm-hmm. So that's, that's a great lesson. Tell me about a time in your career. I mean, you've had an incredible career. I know you played with Sonny Rollins. We were talking about Bobby Broom a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. Tell me about a time in your career where you learned a particularly, I, I know you just talked about a, a moment there, but a particularly big musical lesson. That's some, something that just uh, maybe just sticks with you that comes to the top of your head. Uh, you know, just recently, um, just recently I was playing with a, a bassist and we, we recorded and I was playing this song the normal way I played it. But then I was listening back to the recording. I said, I picked, I literally pulled something out of it. And I was like, that's where I'm supposed to be rhythmically. Um, So first of all, recording truly gives you your, um, um, your mirror, literally, whether it's video or whether it's audio or both it gives you a mirroring effect or understanding of what you are really doing or what you're not doing. Um, I was so off from connecting and locking the groove. And when I heard it in that one small spot, we went back and I was able to do it. Hmm. That was just recently. Um, uh, There's some other times where depending on how you're playing the drums, you can hear, and depending on the volume that you're playing, and this happened to me just actually Saturday, I was playing with a Latin percussionist, depending on how loud you're playing, you can miss the locking. Depending on um, how busy you are, you can miss locking in those grooves together. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting lessons all the time. I miss, there were some Calypso things that I missed when I was with Sonny Rollins that I now go back and I can grasp and say, oh, it was supposed to be here. The groove was supposed to be here in this tempo. It was supposed to lock here as opposed to there. And it's, man, I'm, I'm constantly learning, um, you know, where I should be, where I should sit. And this was just from listening back, you know, rhythmically. Wow, uh, I'm ins- I'm inspired because your attitude of just constantly learning is 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 an amazing reminder for me. Amazing reminder for all of us today. I mean, this is like a, 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 such an accomplished musician as yourself. 
is, is always learning, is always on the path to learning. And I also remember um, a teacher I studied with, uh, Vic Juris, uh, a yeah. guitarist. Uh, you know, I studied with him, and he also had that exact kind of same attitude of, you know, I'm always not 100% satisfied with where I'm at with my playing. Mm-hmm. And when I first heard him say that, I was amazed because I looked up to him as a, guitar- as a, as a guitarist. And mm-hmm. uh, just realizing that, and, and, see, and you're saying the exact same thing. So that spirit of just always learning that we're on this journey uh, pushing forward, I just absolutely um, love that. Now, mm-hmm. you do teach, you are an educator. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to, you were talking a lot about this. Let's, let's go back to some of that goal stuff you're talking about, setting yeah. goals and, and just, you know, taking things one step at a time. What are you doing with some of your students to help them improve? Like, what does that path look like for people who are saying, hey, I want to get better at, uh, at playing jazz, at playing music, whatever their instrument may be. What does a path look like for them to move forward? Awesome. Singing. Okay. Singing. <laughs> Singing. Singing. And I don't mean, I do mean it. Okay. So this was a, this is just recently I, I, I jumped on this um, bit of a soapbox and it singing connects to everything, whether you're singing the rhythm or you're singing the, the uh, melody. Um, okay. So singing. If you're able to sing the phrase, if you're able to uh, repeat what you're hearing through through your voice, that's a direct connection to your body. You can take it a small, don't do the large ones unless you're ready to do the large ones, but take small portions of it. Of course, they got this thing called the amazing slower downer and they got a bunch of different things that you can mm-hmm. slow down the music where you can hear it. And that was one of the things I did actually use it when I did my master's um, at Northwestern. I used that slower downer and I, um, what was the song? It was Miles Davis is, uh, I think it was a so what, the famous, mm-hmm. the famous thing there. But I slowed it down, but I had to be, I was, first I sang it. So I was like, oh man, deep ba ba but you know, the, whatever the soul right. was. And I was just like, it became clear to me, like the rhythm, the melody, it never escaped me once I had that. So that way I could like actually play it. If you can sing it, you can play it as it always is. People always say, um, that's one, two drummers. You from, okay. So from, when since I was a kid, I've been able to mouth the drums and play solos, and mm-hmm. have to invest in just m- like drum set playing from your from the voice, from <laughs> making all the sounds. Why? Because you're investing in the the rhythm. You're investing in the sounds of the drums. You're investing in. Uh, the clarity of the rhythm. <laughs> so it's still singing. It's still singing, though. It's it's yes, and so all of that is clarity. All of that is giving you clarity. It's all giving you a sense of um, how to connect with the music. So n- not only are you just learning a skill, but you're connecting more with the music. That's what singing does. That's what I would say is my model for. Kids. So I teach a, a big band lesson, uh, uh, not a lesson, excuse me. I teach a big band on Sundays, uh, middle school, sixth through 12th graders. And this is, you know, about 17 of them or whatever. And this is truly big band, four uh, trumpets, four trombones. It was seven saxophones, I believe, a tr- basses, drums and guitar. And, you know, they would always laugh at me because I'd say, hey, man, can you sing? You know, even can you sing it being silly? Because okay. even if you sing it being silly, you're trying, you're giving yourself uh, a, a window to just be, you know, a non-expert. Just be a non-expert. Sing it, be silly, be uh, just over the top with it. Just don't, don't care, but just sing it in, a, in that format. And then you start to bring it into perspective. You're right. like, Oh, I actually can do this, but just do it in a way. I had a teacher in uh, my undergrad and he said, man, he would tell the choir all the time, sing it out of tune. 
play with it. That's how you know when it's in tune where it really is. Right. By going for it. Yeah, just go for it. Be be out of tune. <laughs> be totally out of out of spectrum of reality of what the rhythm or what the, the, the note is, and then try to find it. Slowly bring it back into place. Slowly like invest in like, oh, okay, that's actually where it sounds best. You know, but you had the chance to just like kind of be and kind of be, you know, silly, basically, you know, right. it's not always serious. It's not always like, you like, I enjoy music because I know, I know it's not, uh, what do I tell people? I know it's not a uh, heart surgery. Right. It's not, <laughs> it's not, a, it's not a do or die situation. No one's going to, no one's going to die if you play a wrong note. No, no. We'll pick that note. We'll go back and get the broom, sweep it up, and we'll be fine. <laughs> and and per, yeah, and perhaps if you if you don't go out there and make some of those mistakes, you aren't going to learn those important lessons for how to improve, right? Yeah. I mean, if you don't, if, like you said, you know, just be silly. If you don't put yourself out there, if you don't uh, give it a shot, then you know, nothing's ever going to happen anyways, right? So some, it, so it's a good thing. It's a good being, thing to just do this. Being afraid of being wrong. Yeah, that's a tough one for 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 everybody. But our children, children are never afraid of being wrong. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's so true. It's like they they just do it. It's like children; they just do it. We have to continue that mentality. We have to continue that childlike um, introductions into every lessons that we're every lesson. Hey, if we're afraid to do everything, my, man, my two year old son. No joke. This guy, he got up on the ottoman. The ottoman's not that high off the ground. We all know this. But I'm like, Cameron, off the, off the. I said it like at least ten times. Boom. It's like you hit your head, didn't you? Wow. <laughs> like, and he's just like rubbing his head, and I was just like, and I was just like, hey, he had to learn it, but he wasn't afraid to learn the. <laughs> <laughs> learn the hard way yeah he wanted to jump off back and forth we have to 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 not be afraid to 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 play and sing a wrong note especially when we're practicing when we're practicing everything should be wrong you know to some degree like man i'm not playing this five stroke roll even or it's not with the click actually great it's not with the click so now you know what it sounds like when the when you're off from the click, so that's a lesson in and of itself. You don't know what you're off when you're off from the click if you just if you never done it. Right, right, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. So get in there. So so far we got we got singing, we got uh, whether you're a, a, a whatever instrument you play, you're a drummer, and we've got you know just just doing it right, just yes. going out there doing. It. What else? What else do people need to be doing? Working on. Uh, um, uh, this is Sonny Rollins gave me this one. This was a this is a great one, and this goes back to the drums again. But we're, we were in rehearsal, we were playing, and he comes over to me. He goes, "Hey, you're not the only drummer in the band." <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a great lesson. Right? I was like, I love that. I was like, is he talking about somebody? I think he is. I was like, I don't know who he's talking about, but I started laughing. And he was just like. <laughs> I was like, okay, like he was paying attention to like not, things not happening, you know, rhythmically right. and connectively, you know. So he said that he was like, "Hey, you're not the only drummer in the band." Wow. <laughs> so everybody's responsible is what is what he's everybody's saying. Everybody's responsible for having rhythm and locking in and playing well. I mean, you listen to the old Frank Sinatra and. Um, Sammy Davis Jr. and Ella Fitzgerald and uh, uh, oh my, uh, what's his name that sang? Uh, 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 by I forget his name. Um, and, 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 to, to, listen to how rhythmic they sing. The, the 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 rhythms that they sing are just like it's right spot on. Whether it's delayed, or, Billie Holiday. She was a one oh. take. She was a one take wonder basically they called her one take she always got it in one take she never wanted to do more than one take i was like wow the, there's something magical about billy holiday though i mean yes. something about i mean she's always been my favorite i don't know why she's always been my favorite uh, it doesn't matter old new 
for some mm-hmm. reason I've always gravitated to her. I mean, it, there's so much soul coming out of it, but you're right. The phrasing, the the rhythm in the way she sings, it's so raw. It's so organic. Yes. When you say that, <laughs> I love, I love Billie Holiday. Yeah. I'm oh, glad you awesome. mentioned her. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I didn't even know that. You didn't tell me that. <laughs> no. no, no, I didn't. Yeah. I'm glad, I'm glad you brought her up. Yeah. So I have to ask you this question. Okay. It yeah. just, it just, I have to ask you. Yeah. What was it like playing with Sonny Rollins? Was it awesome? Was it, okay. Awesome. It was awesome because you were constantly learning on the on the bandstand and off the bandstand mm. about how life is happening off the bandstand. Right. But one of the biggest things I had an audition. My audition with Sonny was immediate, like uh, an immediate lesson. We we played the music and then afterwards we went and we talked for like five minutes. He says, "Look, man." Um, what we do on this stage is the most important thing, if I'm recalling it, if, well, I'm par- paraphrasing, but it's the most important thing for that day and life in general, because people, they go through everyday mundane life. And for this concert, we want to take them someplace else. And we also wow. need to be someplace else. So we don't want to have to think about the music. We don't want to have to think about what we're doing, we just want to be able to play and be in the moment. Wow. Part of the moment, be in the the spaces of the energy that's already before us that we just need to grab onto. And so, and the people don't want to come to the concert and they don't want to have to think about what they're listening to. They don't want to have to think about tapping their feet. They just want to tap their feet and, and take away all the 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 wrongs they wrong all the things that they were wrong for in you know in their life or i mean that day you know because you can go through every day you know and if you sit down at a really good concert man, i've gone to a pat metheny concert band and i just sat there and just like daydreamed i was just like man this is amazing mm-hmm. <laughs> i've gone to um branford's marcellus so a uh, concert and i was just like yeah man this is and I, Kenny Garrett, I just almost cried at one of his, man, because I was just hanging on all of the notes. And I was just like, man, I was like, dude, you almost had me in tears, you know, but he just would just play and play and just give them, give them himself. And that was another thing. Sonny was just like, and there would be times, man, Sonny would be playing so deep and profound. I remember one of the concerts afterwards, I just cried afterwards, man. It was wow. like, whoa. I was like, because it was just so deep. And so enthralling, like we and we we were just digging in so deep. So mm. I'm a crier sometimes with music, and I'm playing. I'm that. Sometimes you'll see tears, and I'm like, oh, oops. <laughs> but the, but you know the that it shows in the music. I mean, and you're you're such a powerful musician, and you uh, it, your personality just flows out of your playing. You know, I can say that. You know, it just flows out of the way you play. And those musicians you're talking, I mean, when, when they're playing together, they, they transcend this ability. And, and I've certainly been to shows where I've just been like, wow, I can't even believe that just happened. Um, but the thing is, I'm talking to you right now, and you're one of those people. You're one of those people that makes those situations happen. And and that's why, you know, my audience, you know, they, they like learning about how to become better music, jazz musicians, musicians, and, you know, but they also love listening to music. They love listening to jazz and and you're someone i'm excited because i know you're coming out with an album um mm. a really great album and i want you to talk about this because you are one of those people that moves people like mu- moves people in a way with music that can transcend what you what you would expect is possible right when you get into one of those moments tell me about this new album that's uh, that that's coming out soon it's man brent let me i just Tell you that I'm just I'm going to take it from where you just said move. And so the the name of the album is called Movement, ah, uh, nice. particularly because of the drive of each of the songs. It's it's the the dance, the movement. This album movement is the dance. Mm. Every song that you listen to and hear is you have a, a level of dance. There's some type of dance that you feel that you are able to connect with. And that's, we didn't know it actually going in. It was crazy. Like as we start developing everything and how things start to fit together, 
It was just like, oh, these are dance. This is dance music. This is not just and, and as uh, as an audience member and me asking the audience, I never want my audience to just sit. I want my audience to dance. Man, I man, let me tell you one story. Sonny Rollins. First one of the first concerts that I played with him overseas, Umbria, one of, but this is Umbria 2008, I think something like that. Umbria, Italy. Um, yeah. And I didn't know this stuff happened. This is crazy. So we're playing, but da 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 ba da ba ba da ba da 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 right? Don't stop the con. I don't know, 700, 800 people ran to the stage and started dancing. Wow. <laughs> and I turned to Bob Cranshaw and I'm like, he was like, mm-hmm. I was just like, <laughs> oh my goodness. He, was, he just gave me that a matter of fact, like, yep. I was like, whoa, I had no idea. It was like, like, how how was it that I was a participating member of the band and didn't know about this Christmas gift? <laughs> wow. And That's so, so cool. Yeah. It's like out of nowhere. So it like I that and then, so there's one of the songs on this called The City that I got from Sonny one house how, you know, from Sonny and how we were playing one of his tunes or whatever. And it was really, really it's not his song, but it was just like one of the songs inspired me and we and so i created this tune called the city and it's just like it just grooves Hmm. but then also i grew up in chicago so it also has this house music feel (laughs) because house music came from chicago so my brother heard it and he was just like oh man that's that's like chicago house music (laughs) it's like really and but it's 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 jazz it's and it's like and so none of the songs per se um, they, they all connect. First of all, let me say that they all connect okay. because they all have a, uh, continuous, uh, ebb and flow from, um, I would say from just a dance Latin feel to a dance, uh, groove feel. And it's all in there. It's all connected. Like you can always get a two step in and out of nowhere and be, and be right there in the moment. So, um, this music is, is written for everyone for, you know, to have and to connect and to love. And, um, I feel great about it. It's called movement. Um, the name of the album is movement. Um, it's going to be out June 16th national. Uh, you can get an early release if you like. Um, you can go to, can I, should I say the, uh, the, Oh, you can say it now too. We'll say it again later. Yeah, sure. Oh, sure. So you can go to, uh, www dot Kobe K O B I E Watkins W A T K I N S Group Tech G R O U P T E T dot com and you can pick it up there and just you know love on it if you <laughs> let me know what you think about it. Um the the guys on there are really playing and really they dance when they when they play. Well, you got, you got, I know for a fact that you got uh, a super spiritual player on board. You got my old teacher and mentor, Justin Nielsen. He's playing the piano. Yes. Um, and I, I don't know if I know a guy that just, I mean, I, I, I feel like you guys might be kindred spirits because there's yeah. a lot of heart and soul. And Justin has, a, and by the way, for those listening, uh, I actually did interview him on the podcast, uh, uh, episode 100. And 100, actually episode 100. So learnjazzstandards.com forward slash episode 100 if you want to check out uh, that interview. Um, but yeah, Justin has a lot of heart and soul. I mean, I'm, I'm, ex- I'm excited to hear this album. I think it's going to be. Justin and I used to actually just play, like when I moved to Boise or I moved to Eagle, Idaho and taught at uh, Arts West then, um, we would just like, when it was time for us to like have a, to play or whatever the, the, our quartet at the time he and I would just sit down and just start playing mm-hmm. no bass it would just be he and I for like 10 minutes <laughs> just yeah. like literally following and connecting one another is really 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 interesting and so we knew then that was 2010 like and th- I think that's really how we first connected more or less. It was just like, hey, let's just play. We just start playing together. It was just that was it, you know. And so then his brother, Ryan Nielsen, he's a dancer. Oh my goodness, and he sounds great, trumpeter. Mm-hmm. Um, 
truly connected with his voice, like he will sing, not only sing his part, but he can transpose his part using soulfish. <laughs> wow. He's a, he's a, yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a real music. He's a real musical guy. I, the whole family is really musical. So, yeah, they're really, they're, so, oh, so um, their mom, Elaine, <laughs> Uh, Elaine Nielsen, she made me the uh, the fifth son. I'm the I'm the fifth son because there's four women and one, one girl, but I'm the fifth son by adopt. She adopted me in and because the man, all of them can play. Literally, all yeah. of them can play. And it's amazing. Like I'm like, yeah, this is like. Um, once someone asked me, why do you guys, you know, why do you use them? I was like, man, these cats should be out on the road. These are these are amazing musicians. You know, Alex, who's the bassist, who's also a marketing director, he's just like, but he can play the bass. Mm -hmm. It's like ridiculous. I was like, dude, it's like an innate thing for him. Mm -hmm. He hears it. So anyhow, our bassist, uh, amazing cat, Aaron Miller, he's on there, man. He's digging in. He's killing. Jonathan Armstrong, he teaches at ISU, and he's originally from California, man, and he's such a, I mean, I have like spirited cats, everybody listens and everybody connects. Yeah. It's written. It's it's musically amazing and scary at the same time. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Listen, I am fired up about this album. And and hey, everybody listening right now, I hope you're fired up about this album too. And I really want you to go check it out. Uh, you can pre-order this album, right, Kobe? Is that Absolutely. true? All right. So if you want to pre-order this album, and I know I'm going to be doing it, go to kobewatkinsgrouptet.com. And if you're checking out in the show notes, we'll have that link in the show notes. But you can just go to that link, Kobe Watkins Group Ted. I want you to order this album because uh, this is going to be a powerful piece of music. And if, if you're listening to Kobe, today and you're like, wow, this this guy is inspiring and I want to hear what this is all about. I, I encourage you, you know, go out there, uh, you know, it, it, you know, inspire yourself by listening to this music. So Kobe Watkins, and, and, you know, aside from this album that I'm stoked about, I've been very stoked to talk to you, Kobe. I mean, you've just laid down some value for the audience today. Uh, you've shared your story and inspired me. I know you inspired them too. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thanks for being on the show. This has been super exciting. And, uh, you know, I think we might have you again in the future sometime. Oh, please, please, please. Yeah, <laughs> I'll be absolutely. I'm available. Absolutely. Thank you, Brent. Thank you. That was a good one. Thank you again, Kobe Watkins, our special guest, for being on the show. And that's all for now. But if you were listening at the very beginning of the show, I told you that Kobe has something very special he wants to give away for free. That's right. I said free to you guys. He's letting me do this. And I'm just, I'm really excited. I'm really thankful to him as well. Um, what he wants to do is he wants to give away uh, four free downloads of his new album, Movement, which is so cool. And what we're going to do for this is a little bit of a raffle. So um, if you've been listening to this show for the last month or so, you know that we have a Facebook community group. If you go to learnjazzstandards.com forward slash community, learnjazzstandards.com forward slash community. Uh, and if you're not part of that group, just it's a closed group. Apply for the group. Uh, just answer a few questions for me. I'll let you in there. And this is what I want you to do. I want with hashtag tip, hashtag tip, tell me what you learned from this episode, 116, what you learned from Kobe, and uh, just put that in the group uh, and and just share what you learned, one of your main takeaways. So remember, hashtag tip, and then what you got out of this show from Kobe. Make sure you mention that this was episode 116, and uh, in about a week, uh, I'll uh, I'll I'll send out to the uh, the winners uh, some free download codes the top four. So obviously, um, if you're listening to this way in the future from uh, you know outside of the month of May 2018, uh, it's probably you're probably not going to be part of that raffle anymore. But uh, for those of you who are listening in real time, go ahead Facebook community group learnjazzstandards.com forward slash community hashtag tip what you learned from Kobe in this episode and uh, you'll be officially a part of that raffle okay that's what you're gonna do uh, thanks so much for listening uh, I really appreciate it hey I all say this if you got value of today's show and you're like hey this this is awesome and I want other people to know about this show of course share it with your friends who you know 
will want to hear about this stuff. But also make sure you go to iTunes, your favorite podcast listening service, leave a kind rating and review helps support the show. All right. Hey, that's all for today. Thank you so much. We're going to be here with another episode, episode 117 next week. I look forward to seeing you back then. Thanks for listening to the LJS podcast brought to you by LearnJazzStandards.com. Subscribe to the series on iTunes and don't forget to join our jazz community at LearnJazzStandards.com forward slash newsletter.